prepare to experience the strongest radio allowable by law. Secrets will be revealed. Myths Myths dispelled. dispelled. From the studio gym where excuses never apply. It's Superhuman Radio with your host, Carl Lenore. This is Science for Humans with Dr. Jeff Galini. Dr. J. Carl, how we doing, man? Wonderful, wonderful. How you doing? Pretty good. So, you know, we plan these shows in advance. Actually, Dr. Jeff uh, scours uh, numerous emails that we get from listeners constantly to select the shows. And these this show was selected at the beginning of the month to do today, but... It couldn't come at a better time because just a couple days ago, Adele Musa and Anthony Roberts wrote about a study that looked at a variety of top-selling big-name brand uh, protein powders, uh, only to find that the reported amino acid profiles on the label did not meet label claims when they were tested. Uh, so it just, you know, it's unbelievable the scrutiny that protein powder is under right now. Would you agree with that? Yeah, you know, and one of the things that I was thinking about this morning, uh, getting ready for today is, you know, athletes are so conscious as we are about what type of foods, you know, the quality, organic, you know, grass fed beef. And then we go, Oh, I need protein powder. Where's the cheapest place to buy it from? You, Why you, is that? Do you know? Do you know the number one reason I've been told by two of the largest suppliers um, to the um, uh, to, to the more hardcore uh, supplement buyer that they don't want to carry Thrive? Really? You know what? The, you know what? The, the reason they cite? Why? I'm being honest when I'm saying this. I mean, I'm not trying to be uh, insulting. Bodybuilders aren't going to select a protein powder that's more expensive. I don't care how good it is for them. You know, and, and that, and again, I just don't get it because again, you know, bodybuilders and athletes, you know, when I bodybuild it and I, and now, I mean, you know, I'm so, as I said, conscious about the quality of the food. Protein powder is food. You know, taking in these, these cheap cut, uh, proteins, um, you aren't getting what you're paying for. You know, some of them has been like only 10% of the, the label claim. So you got fillers, you know, maltodextrins, you've got sugars in there, dextrose. Um, and of course, you know, adding cheap, uh, amino acids, uh, they don't do anything toward muscle building. So, you know, again, if you're an athlete and you think that way, you need to get your head on straight because you need quality protein powder. The same way as you need quality food. If you tell me that you can build quality, Muscle by eating uh, Mickey D's uh, filet fish. I'm sorry. It ain't going to happen. Okay, so let's start out with this since it's timely. I- explain the whole nature of protein spiking. They, they, they use specific amino acids that when those protein samples are tested using the standard uh, test analysis approach, which is they burn the protein and look at the residue that's left over, they can actually hide how much protein is in uh, that sample, what are the amino acids that they use for spiking specifically? Well, like you said, you know, protein, protein spiking has been going on for a long time. Um, you know, it started years and years ago, but, you know, several years ago, the Chinese were adding melamine, which is used in a fertilizer because fertilizers, fertilizers you need a high nitrogen content. Right. Um, same thing with amino acids. They have a high nitrogen content. So when we're talking about putting in amino acids... We're talking about the cheapest ones and typically, uh, glycine, you know, or taurine. Now that doesn't mean that those amino acids are no good. Those amino acids are good when used as an amino acid or an amino acid supplement. But will glycine build muscle? Will taurine build muscle? No, it's not a complete um, uh, protein source. So what happens is, is when you, when you run these Kydel tests, essentially you burn the protein and you test the nitrogen content, anything that contains nitrogen can be put in there, and you then have to assume that, okay, it's supposed to be a protein powder, I have nitrogen, that equals high-quality protein. But the people that were spiking these products are are intelligent. You know, they know 
that these things will test out that way. So <clears throat> what started to happen is we started to use different types of analysis to actually look at the amino acid profile. We know what the amino acid profile for whey, for milk, for egg um, looks like. So when you get a profile and you see that the glycine content is, you know, 700 times out of proportion, um, spiked. It, right. it doesn't occur that way naturally. Right. Um, but for the most part, <clears throat> you can look at these protein powders, Carl, and you can see these crystals uh, floating in the powder. Well, right. what is that? Right. I'm trying to actually find a, um, a a kitchen screen that people can just go buy these, try to screen it out, and if they get white crystals, shouldn't be in their protein, not a protein Well, now, powder. the only, uh, only exception to that uh, when we talk about Thrive is Thrive does have additional amino acids, free-form amino acids added to it. So we but, expect that, but that's a that's different, different. No, yeah, no, I know. I just want to make case. sure somebody doesn't go, wait a minute, yeah. there's crystals in oh, Thrive. No, we intend those to be in there. <laughs> no, no. When when you add amino acids like we did to Thrive, there's a reason behind it. But guess what? That's not part of the protein claim. Right. You will see those amino acids quantified with how many milligrams of each one, and there's a reason why those are in there. But we're talking about when those amino acids are not on the label yes. and they're trying to incorporate them as part of the label claim. Now, you know, in China or uh, Canada, it's rampant. Most every one of the proteins in Canada are spiked every protein in Europe. And the reason is, is they don't test over there. They don't care. You know, in the USA, I've been talking about this for years really? and nobody wanted to listen to me until finally uh, a brave law firm has stepped up and they are out trying to clean the industry up. I'm all for you know, that. I really am. Yeah, this is not, and I am too. You know I mean? I don't like these troll suits, you know, where they're just suing okay, people. Okay, I got I got to ask you a question, okay? I happen yeah. to know that you you go to great pains to source proteins for your specialty powders, including Thrive, right. that, you, that you manufacture for us. And the reason you manufacture it for us is because we know that we are, we can, sell that product to the end user and feel rest assured of what we say is in it is in it. That's the reason why we have this relationship. Okay. Right. With that being said, it seems that there's two big players in the dairy protein industry, big players. Okay. I'm not going to mention their names, but it's where everything, if, if you go back, eventually you find one of these players in the line of supply. So can we go back and say that any of those that are supplying the suppliers, so to speak, are, are going to be held culpable for this? I think so. I mean, you know, <clears throat> you can't hide behind as a manufacturer or as a brand and go, oh, I didn't know. No, it's your responsibility to do your due diligence. If you haven't properly tested and identified the protein that you're buying is not good, then, yeah, you're you're at fault, but so is that supplier. Right. But, you know, the big problem is, is like you said, there, there are two big um, – cheese manufacturers in the USA and most of the spiking right now is on whey because again people trying to get the cost down for years the price went way up um, and that's the number one selling protein source so of course everybody's trying to sell off a of price but most of these guys are buying from brokers it doesn't even contain the manufacturer's bag any longer mm. but I'm telling you it's not the suppliers that are adulterating this it is the actual manufacturers themselves okay the protein guys um, their protein is free when you make whey protein well when you make cheese your byproduct is whey you've made your money off of cheese so anything you make off of whey is bonus right so why would you put money into that which would actually increase your cost right because now you got to buy amino acids. So again, it isn't happening. I've never seen one supply um, protein that has come in that has been adulterated. It is done at the manufacturer and the brand level. A lot of these brands, you know, have started their own little manufacturing, and the rest of them are going to all the cheapskate manufacturers that will do anything for a dime. Um, I can't tell you, the last five or six years, you know, people who have come to me and said, "Look, I want some protein." And uh, can you, you know, put 5% or 10% or 30% glycine? Sure, I can do that. Um, but I don't want to put it on the label. Absolutely not. Take a hike. Yeah. I mean, you know, if you want to claim it on the label because there's some therapeutic reason, uh, like Thrive. Yeah, we use glycine as part of the sweetener complex. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's great. But it's, a, but it it's on the, the label as part of the sweetener complex. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, Dr. J, I want to go through this because I want to cover this. And we're going to, I want to go like bullet, okay? So. 
let's identify different proteins. Whey protein concentrate. What is it? So, so the most popular are the whey proteins. Um, whey protein is a byproduct. When you make cheese, um, you got the curds in the whey. Um, the curds go toward the cheese processing. The whey is useless uh, in cheese manufacturing. So what happens is, is you now filter that. You know, whey contains a lot of lactose, a lot of fat, and some protein, typically about 12% protein. When it goes through that filtration process, basically we're filtering everything out and we are trying to get the protein on a concentrate up to about 75 to 80 percent. Um, anything over 34 percent is actually considered a concentrate by um, by USDA standards. Mm. Um, now you've got a liquid whey that's about 80 percent. You've got to dry it. So there's a variety of ways that you dry that whey into a powder. And now you have a whey concentrate. To get a whey isolate, you've got to filter it one more time because you're now looking at getting it from about an 80% protein up to a 90%, which is what's considered a, an isolate is actually like 90, uh, 88 to 95 um, would be isolates. Okay. So you just filter it one more time. Um, but that's where whey, uh, any type of whey comes from. Now, the other milk proteins actually are manufactured from milk itself where you can't make whey from milk. Um, there is a way you can do it, but essentially, you know, to do it cost effectively, it comes from cheese yeah, manufacturing. Yeah, it's cheaper to be, have it be a byproduct of another process that you're getting paid for. Like yeah, I saw that. some uh, buddies uh, ad out there claiming that their whey isn't comes from cheese, it comes from milk, therefore it's better. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's whey. I mean... Yeah. <laughs> So, so casein and, and milk protein concentrates, those are the next two. So ca casein, when they say casein, there's lots of caseins. Micellar casein, uh, but we also see, uh, uh, calcium casinate, which is a lot of people like to call casein. But isn't calcium casinate just an inferior form of, of, uh, it's actually used in, in dairy, uh, powdered dairy, isn't it? It is. You know, I mean, there really isn't any casein. Uh, when you see casein, it's typically calcium caseinate. Um, which yeah is a is a big dairy product. Um, most of the myocellular casein is rubbish because again it's about twice the cost of calcium caseinate, and we're seeing people are doing nothing more than putting calcium caseinate in, calling it myocellular. Very difficult right. to, you know, to detect that. So again, scam. So I would stay away from all those. Uh, sodium caseinate is another form. Now those are just very slow. Uh, absorbing proteins. Uh, milk protein concentrates and isolate are a little bit faster absorbing than casein, but not as quick as uh, as your whey proteins and your whey protein isolates. Typically, a whey protein isolate uh, is absorbed within about an hour. A concentrate is about two hours, so they're they're very quickly absorbed. But milk protein concentrate, in my humble opinion, is a very very overlooked high quality uh, yeah. protein. And and we use milk protein concentrate and whey protein. Uh, concentrate in order to come up with the the the, the human breast milk uh, 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 model, if you will, because yes. I didn't want to use micellar casein because there's other stuff in milk protein concentrate that we 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 don't want to strip out, right? No, absolutely. I mean, we're we're looking at using the natural casein that occurs in uh, milk proteins and whey proteins, right? Uh, so again, we're not we're not taking it out and then fortifying it and calcifying it um, and then putting it back in, we're using what's naturally occurring, like you said, which is, is similar to uh, breast milk. You know, uh, the other types of protein, uh, unfat milk, not many people, you know, athletes use it because, again, it's it's only 34% protein. It's mostly uh, lactose. Right. Um, you see that more in the food industry or some of the um, uh, big box stores, you know, their meal replacement. The drinks contain not fit milk uh, right because it's cheap right uh, is that just you know, a, is that just the powdered milk that our mothers used to buy from carnation when when milk supplies were were being challenged yep. wow it's just not that milk you dry it and now you get a powder so yeah it's carnation instant uh, milk and it's interesting because you can still buy carnation milk off the grocery store shelf for a fraction of the price that these other guys are mixing some vitamins and some carbohydrates and sugar and then selling you as a meal replacement. A meal replacement, an MRP, I know. Isn't that funny? Listen, I want to take a break. I'm not going to I want to take a break. And when we come back, I'd like to talk about some of the other players. Let's talk about 
Uh, egg, let's talk about uh, vegan proteins as well and anything else that fits into this mix. This is a perfect time to have this discussion. Dr. Jeff Galini, a man who knows the insides and outside of this industry uh, for well over 30 years. So what he's telling you is true, folks. Stay tuned. How to properly use carbohydrates to ignite your performance in the field and in the gym? You will now, thanks to this free book by EFX Sports. The Carb User's Guide for Maximum Performance reveals why omitting carbohydrates from your diet can totally crush your gains. Ever wonder how many grams you need for your specific sport? Not anymore. We give you the critical number you need to dominate your competition. You'll even discover the super carb that's taking the athletic world by storm. You must try it to believe it. Go to getcarbolin.com forward slash carb guide today and get your copy absolutely free. Once again, it's G-E-T-K-A-R-B-O-L-Y-N dot com forward slash C-A-R-B-G-U-I-D-E. 4.6 million years of evolution gave us the blueprint for the perfect protein supplement for humans. So why do all protein supplement manufacturers ignore it? We don't. The first human appropriate protein supplement is Thrive Advanced. Built around the blueprint of mother's milk, Thrive Advanced contains the amino acids, peptides, micronutrients, enzymes, probiotics, and vitamins that support protein absorption and assimilation. All of our dairy proteins come from happy cows on pastures here in the United States and are low heat pasteurized. You'll never find any artificial sweeteners, additives, or ingredients. You won't even find thickeners or gums in Thrive Advanced. And we back up our label claims with post-production lab analysis that's available right on our website. Visit superhumanradio.com and click the Thrive Advanced banner ad and use code SHR and save 50% off your entire order today. A legendary name in hardcore supplementation. Iron Mag Labs. 100% original, patent pending, andro compound. The most effective, hardcore, groundbreaking bodybuilding supplements in the world. In the world. Iron Mag Labs. Revolutionize. Hardcore supplementation for more than a decade. Visit IronMagLabs.com. IronMagLabs.com. There are a few products that I believe in the way I believe in CanC eye drops. I've been using CanC for six months now, and the changes in my vision are nothing short of amazing. Wow, that's an old commercial. The truth is, I've been using CanC eye drops for 11 years now, and I credit CanC eye drops as being the reason that I do not need reading glasses at 58 years old. CanC eye drops improve the quality and health of your eyes indefinitely. That's why I both use and endorse can see eye drops go to wisechoicemedicine.com and learn about how can see eye drops can improve the health of your eyes and the quality of your vision today <sighs> too much on your mind to fall asleep no oh, no it happens to all of us every now and then. Instead of counting sheep, count Sleep Factors, a naturopathic formulated blend that supports falling asleep naturally. No medicated numbing, no harsh interruptions of your body's natural flow. Sleep Factors work in harmony with your body and its natural rhythms, so sleep just happens naturally. Sleep Factors by Michael's Naturopathic Programs. You can find Sleep Factors and Michael's entire line of body-loving naturopathic formulations at your local health food store or online at Michael's health.com practitioner formulated practitioner approved ever feel like you want something crunchy from the company that gave us the quest protein bar now comes the quest high protein potato chips with 21 grams of high quality protein and only five grams of carbs and no artificial ingredients just like quest bars you'll feel like you're cheating but you're not Go to superhumanradio.com and click the Quest High Protein Potato Chip banner ad today and get ready to be satisfied. Thanks to Quest Nutrition, chips just aren't what they used to be. AnabolicMinds.com is the premier website for credible information on building muscle, burning fat, supplementation, and more. With over 100,000 active registered members and over 2.5 million posts, it's one of the largest communities on the Internet to get help and answers to your questions. It's also the place that the official Superhuman Radio Forum is hosted. Visit Visit AnabolicMinds.com today and get into the action. AnabolicMinds.com. Learn. Teach. Lead. You're listening to the Superhuman Channel. We're ripped and we're ready. 
Welcome back to Science for Humans. Dr. J is giving us the skinny on uh, protein supplements so that we can all be educated consumers because that's what it takes to make good decisions today. You have to understand more than just uh, walking in and saying, hey, uh, that looks like a good price. Okay, so what about egg whites? Back in the day, Dr. J, a lot of guys, even I want to say Rio Blair and those guys, they thought that egg protein was superior to all protein. Is it? Is it really that good? I mean, egg protein is, <clears throat> but you got to remember back then, uh, we didn't have whey proteins right. uh, during the Blair. So eggs are a, a great amino acid profile, but when you look at the biological value, meaning how much am I actually absorbing, you know, egg whites aren't uh, absorbed as well as like your whey proteins uh, are. Um, but other than that, it's a great source of uh, protein. They're a little expensive. They typically don't taste well. So you don't really see, you know, I don't really see the advantage of just taking pure egg white protein anymore. If it's part of a mix, then okay, <clears throat> just from an absorption standpoint. Uh, but other than that, um, you don't see it much anymore. So would you consider egg white protein a slow protein, like more like a casein, or do you see it as a fast protein, more like a whey? No, it's a slower protein. Yeah. I mean, you know, yeah. both of us, we eat egg, egg whites and egg in the morning. Um, so, again, it's a slower protein. Um, so, again, if you're looking for something a little bit slower absorption, uh, that's great. Just remember, you know, it's about uh, maybe half of the biological value as a whey protein. Uh, so sometimes you have to use a little bit more to get the same uh, types of effects. Okay. So now the next one is a controversial one, and that is yeah. um, soy protein. And the re reason I say it's it's controversial is this. I've been told that, Back in the day when soy protein first hit the market, against again guys like Rio Blair and 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 the folks over at the, the uh, um, uh, what's that uh, the place that was in Pennsylvania, the, the where the AAU came from. Um, anyway, uh, the, oh York Barbell, they were the ones that introduced oh. soy protein back in the day. But what they discovered quickly was that soy protein did not digest easily, and most of the people who used it. And it was only later on that we discovered that the enzyme trypsin, T-R-Y-P-S-I-N, is required uh, as a protease enzyme to break down soy protein. A large portion of our population does not produce trypsin. No, and, I, and I've never been a, a fan of soy protein. The other thing is, is it's not a complete protein. It's actually missing uh, L-methionine, so you have to actually for Fortify that powder with L-methionine. Now, you need to put it on the label, or else it's absolutely worthless as a protein supplement. Um, but the other thing is, is, you know, because of the isoflavones, um, you know, I know a lot of guys who have, I'm not going to say they got gynecomastia from protein, but it surely didn't help their situation. And, and you know, that's, a, that's an important distinction. So there's there's a group of people who are thinking right now, yeah, but we've just learned that methionine, high methionine levels seem to be what's linked to the progressive aging effects of a high-protein diet, and that's only in the face of not having enough glycine in the diet. But more right. importantly, what people don't realize is mTOR is not just stimulated by leucine. It's stimulated by methionine as well. So methionine is an anabolic amino acid. Learning how to mitigate any of the potential damaging effects of, of large amounts of methionine is the goal, not restricting methionine completely. Uh, last one. No, and oh, God, I'm sorry. About grams, but uh, in, and you know we're talking about grams, yeah. not milligrams. Yeah, no, no, I know. Um, so the, yeah. What so the other proteins that I I'm not a fan of, you know, wheat, barley, hemp, right? Mainly because uh, gluten. You know, just don't think they're very well absorbed. Uh, all the vegan proteins that I do like, uh, I do like pea protein. Yes, yes. Um, but again, it's it's a slow absorbing. But if you look at baby food, you know that's why they have peas. Um, not to you know give the baby something that tastes terrible, but they're very easily absorbed. You know, nice soluble um, and insoluble fibers, good starch that you will normally find uh, located, and then you know good quality protein. I'm using one straight from Montana here where we grow peas. We're the number one pea growing state and fractionating it right here. Um, so, again, you know, getting close to the source. Um, is it better than waves and things? 
No, it's a different type of protein. Right. So, and, you know, if you take anything from this, none of these proteins are really better than the neck, so you can't say whey is, be- is the best of all. It depends on what you're trying to do with it well, um, and what your goals are. <clears throat> and and, and it, it needs to be said that getting a high-quality pea protein may be more important and more critical than dairy protein, and here's why. Just this morning, one of the boards that I belong to, a woman posted that her son, who's a football player, started using 200 grams of pea protein a day, vegan protein a day. It was predominantly pea. And he is now in the hospital with a problem with his liver. And You know why? You know, you know what? You, just the way you got to make sure you're getting high-quality dairy proteins, don't just assume that because something says vegan that it's got a halo on it and everybody behind it was just peace-loving and honest because there, there are pea proteins out there that have stuff in them you don't want. They, well, Carl, and right now, all the pea proteins are from China because there is no fractionating happening in the USA. Uh, <clears throat> Canada and North Dakota are doing some 50% fractionation for the animal industry, but all of the human stuff, China is buying our peas. They're doing the processing. It's coming back over just pure rubbish, impurities, heavy metals, because their water and their quality control that's why that kid was in the hospital so so even though i have pea protein i don't use it because right now what's on the market is all coming out of china and it's very low quality okay so there's the summary of the discussion on protein and this was a fantastic discussion i want to thank you so much jeff because this really was needed for everybody who buys protein powder absolutely so make sure again you know don't go buy the cheapest uh Things like Thrive Protein or EFX Sports NF Pro. There's a reason why not that we're trying to make a whole lot of money off of it, but quality costs. So just the way that you spend money changing your oil, you buy good cars, you buy good food, buy quality protein. Yeah, don't skimp on that stuff. All right, Dr. J, we'll talk to you next week, brother. Thanks, man. Take Uh, care.